Good evening. I want to welcome you to the Robert Turkey Performing Arts Center here at the high school and uh, thank you for being here for our 2023 State of Schools. Uh, in case you don't know, I'm Chad Belleville, superintendent here at Fairfield Union and this is always a great evening for us uh, to update the community on uh, things that have happened over the past year, uh, outlook of things that are, are to come in the next school year, and then we'll have each of our administrators up to report on their buildings, uh, give district updates, and then at the end of the evening, one of the uh, most special things that we do all year long is recognize our 10 Senior Salute honorees and award the Kevin Miller Memorial Scholarship. So we have a, a full docket this evening. Uh, you can see the agenda on the screen uh, to my left. And uh, throughout the evening, it, uh, we hope you, that you find it informative and uh, encouraging to see the great things happening in our district and things that we have planned for the future. To get us started off, I would like to introduce Ms. Jana Markwood, our student body vice president, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, I would like to invite you all to stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. As part of our state of schools, uh, we have a superintendent's advisory council that meets monthly throughout the school year. And as part of that council, our student body class president uh, really has a, a high responsibility of reporting back to that committee, uh, thoughts, thoughts and, and feelings, ideas coming, coming from, from the student body, body areas where we need to improve as a district from, from the student's perspective, their thoughts and ideas of how we can improve. And as part of the responsibilities of the class president, we do have our class president present each year at the State of Schools just their thoughts, uh, their uh, recollections of their time at Fairfield Union. Uh, so at this time, I would like to call Cole Johnson, our student body class president, to the podium to start us off with the State of Schools and the student's perspective. Good evening. Uh, my, my name is Cole Johnson. Johnson. I'm, I'm the student, student council, council vice president, or president, not vice president. <laughs> and um, I want to first off thank Mr. Belleville for just allowing me to speak here tonight and just share um, a little bit of what the past four years has meant to me and just as a high school student what I've experienced with my classmates. And so I first off want to start with student council Christmas shopping trip. And so I'm guessing many of you know about it, but if you don't, um, the student council shopping trip is something uh, that honestly I think is probably one of the best things that I've done in high school. Um, I've participated in it all four years. And it, for those of you that don't know, um, it's where a member in student council, so every member gets paired up with an elementary school student. And so you get paired up with a student from either uh, Bremen or Pleasantville, and you go on just a shopping trip. And so these students are students that either their families have um, maybe financial issues or maybe they've had a traumatic experience and um, they just need this day. And so. As a high school student, to be able to go with them and take them on a shopping trip and then to lunch, lunch at Furches, and, and just, just to see, see that joy um, with them, them and potentially maybe the first time they've ever done this before, or maybe it's just a nice a day for them. them. Um, just to see that um, and the joy that it brings them, them really honestly fills you up and, and makes you uh, have gratitude for what, for what you have and be thankful. And so, Mrs. Toller, um, who leads it, just does a wonderful job. Um, she's an amazing teacher and an amazing person, and she tries to bring as many students that need it as possible. And, and it's, it's just an honor, honor to be a part of, um, to see with all the students. And it's not just the kids that are getting the shop that are happy, but it brings joy to every high schooler and teacher that's part of it. And so honestly, I think it, it is truly one of the best things I've done throughout high school, and I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. And so the next thing I want to focus on is um, the music department. And so for me, I've been a part of choir and musicals. Um, I included band because what I'm about to say, I feel like applies to all three areas. 
but, but for me, I've been, been a part of the choir program and the musical program. All four years. Well, for the I've been a part of the Subway Singers for four years, and then I've been a part of the musical since sophomore year. And just seeing it grow each year in size and um, skill, it's just a great thing to be a part of. Um, I don't think that you can always judge success by um, how good you are, just by improving each day. But to be a part of a successful program, honestly, it makes it that much better. And so I think that to be a part of a music program that put all the people are pushing each day um, to not plateau but to get better, it's just an amazing experience. And I've met some truly wonderful people. Um, for me personally, Mr. Gregory has been my teacher, and um, since he came, he's just done a wonderful job um, taking it to the next level. And I feel like the future is really bright. Um, the band, I feel like the, my, some of my friends that are in band would say the exact same thing, that it's just getting better and better each year. And I hope that in the future, they continue to grow um, in size and skill. And uh, it's just been a wonderful time being a part of it the past four years. And the last thing I want to talk about is athletics. So for me personally, I played basketball and soccer. But I just want to talk about all our athletics. Um, I think this year alone, um, every, in every area, athletics is successful. And I think that that is a, attributed to the coaches, but also just the students. And so for me, the soccer and basketball program have been very successful as I've been here, but in every area. I think this year, we had cross country go to states. We had um, girls soccer go to regional finals, basketball go to, go to regional, regional finals. finals. And, and then this year, track is going out to regionals and potentially states. states. And so, so just in all those areas, areas again, that isn't the only um, factor that determines success, but just to see that level of, of success, um, it's just, just an incredible thing, and just to, to be pushed by the coaches and, and players each day. Um, me personally, I love being a part of it, and so I want to thank all the coaches and all the, the players for just um, everything that they put into the sport, um, and just pushing each other to be not just better athletes, but better people. Um, and so the next thing I want to talk about is kind of another aspect of, of my high school experience. And so I first want to talk about the passion and compassion for teachers and staff. Um, I wrote that supporting students, they support students academically, but also relationally through the good and the bad. And so obviously, um, coming into high school, I never would have assumed that I would go through a pandemic. Um, but the first two years were, were different, but I honestly feel like the way that the staff and administration handled it was very well. Um, I, I would say that as a student, it's very nerve-wracking to be at your house and not know if you're going to get sick or not and, and how classes are going to work. But the way that the, the students um, and staff handled it was just um, incredible. And I think that the, after that, um, we just kept on going. And I think that um, obviously no one can prepare for that. I mean, you, as a teacher, you probably also never have guessed that that's what would have happened. And so I think that the way that they handled it with, with patience um, and just determination really made me want to keep learning um, and keep pursuing all my activities, and so I think that just seeing the, the way that they loved us, the teachers, and just the way that um, they, they kept us focused um, was just a wonderful thing to be a part of, and uh, obviously this past year we had some, some very hard times, but again, I truly do think it showed the compassion of our school district and the closeness of everybody, and um, again, it just made me really grateful for the school district I'm a part of, um, and just the love that the teachers have for the students. Um, the next thing I put is school spirit, so this is more focused on the students. Um, I think this year was probably the most I've, or the closest I've ever seen the students. Um, I saw in the classroom, but also in athletics, um, being in sports, just the way that everyone supported each other. Um, me personally, I saw it, as you can see, in the basketball team, just the way that the students came out and supported us each game and, and how it was reciprocated through all the sports um, was just, it made, it made you really, really excited to go out and play. Um, obviously, as an athlete, you desire to play the sport, but when your students support you, it makes it that much better. And so I think that it's not just going to stop this year, it's going to be the next for the years to come. And so I hope that all the students just stay close um, and keep supporting each other. And I just am thankful for, for all of them. And the final thing I want to talk about is um, an initiative that Mr. Schaefer and Mr. McPhail um, put in this year, which is AAA plus one. So attitude, attempts, and attendance. Thank you. I blanked so hard right there. And, uh, and then plus one is 1% one, 1 better each day. And so I think that um, all three of those things um, combined really makes you focus. And I think initially when they introduced this motto, I was kind of confused and kind of wondering like why do I, why do I need a motto? Um, I feel like I'm already kind of motivated. But when you truly buy into a motto, I think it, it, it hones you in and makes you focus on the small things that you can, can just improve each day and, and how over time it compounds. And so I think that as a student that already I would say I have pretty good motivation, um, it helped me, but I could see a lot in students that maybe have not had that motivation before. And I think that as, as a mindset to have that, to just get a little bit better each day, really makes you um, look back after months or however long it's been a year and just see how much you've gotten better. 
And so I'm really thankful that um, they introduced that model this year. I think it was an incredible um, way and, and ability to see all the students get better each day in every aspect, not just academics, but athletics as people. Um, and this can apply to our lives as well as we graduate. And so I think that I'm going to take this with me. Um, this is something that I'm really thankful for. Um, and just thankful for the, the teachers for wanting to invest in us and push us to be better. And I'm hopeful that in the future that the students keep getting better and that our school district keeps improving. So I want to thank everyone for, for being here tonight and allowing me to speak. And that's my high school experience. Thank you. In short, it's finding ways to encourage positive behaviors in our building. We did staff training on this and formed a PBIS committee. This team got right to work, looking into the things that we were already doing in this area and what things we could add or change to improve in this area. Here are some of the things that we're, we were already doing in this area. We have bug awards, which are given to students who bring up grades. So it's an acronym for bringing up grades. Um, on their report cards from each nine weeks. We recognize third and fourth graders who earn all A's and all A's and B's on their report cards at the end of each quarter. We hand out respect coupons to any student that we catch being great and doing the things that show respectful behavior. These respect coupons get turned into the office and students get to help with the morning announcements which almost all of them love to do. We've had a few that have passed and said, no, don't make me do that. Um, one of the new ideas that we've implemented uh, the second half of the school year was our SOAR t-shirts for students who show the following characteristics. Safe, optimistic, attentive, and respectful. Each teacher selects one student who exemplifies these characteristics for the quarter. Each student gets recognized in front of their classmates. They receive a certificate, a t-shirt, and a picture on the school website. These are the winners that we had for each grade level from quarter three. And tomorrow we get to announce our winners for quarter four uh, SOAR awards. These are amazing groups of students. Another thing that we've put into place this year are what we call the TLC bracelets. 
um, with the character trait DISCs. Uh, TLC stands for Thriving Learning Communities, and this program teaches children about 24 core character strengths. Each person has all of these strengths, but we each have a top five that are most evident in our day-to-day -day activities and interactions. One other event that I would like to feature is the Kids Heart Challenge. This year, Deputy Dixon and I agreed to take whipped cream pies in the face, three each, for the six students who collected the most money for the American Heart Association. Ms. Valesco planned the activities for the students during gym class and facilitated the assembly for the celebration and pie throwing. I'm not sure who was more excited, the kids who got to put the pies in our faces or the student body who watched this take place. What a huge outpouring of support. As a building, we were able to collect $6,286.53 for this amazing cause. And I want to take a minute to thank everybody who con contributed to this. From little falcons that learn to fly to students that soar, we love each and every student that comes through our doors and works hard, and we work hard as a team to meet their individual needs. Pleasantville is an amazing place to be. Mr. Knott. that is true to the core belief of the building in which you are working with. So this year, I decided make today so good that yesterday gets jealous. The idea being, be your best every day, no matter what. And let me tell you, 400 kids, they did that. All right, well, you know, it's not an elementary school if there's not superheroes, shark attacks, and they were stuck with a new principal this year too. So if you look at those pictures, you can see one of my favorite things about our building are the different activities we get involved in. We have our holiday-themed Christmas activity. We have a wonderful Thanksgiving um, tour that we talk. And then, of course, first grade does a vote in November, and they decide which costume I get to wear. And I was a lovely chicken drumstick this year. It's important to me and the, and the students that I work with and the teachers that I work with that we take the time to honor really good behavior and let kids and staff know that we appreciate it. So one of the coolest things that we do is we do Fantastic Falcons where when we see good character, we recognize that good character by writing that down, it's announced, we display them in the building. One of the neat aspects of that is we allow students to, the, to do that for the, each other and also for, t for their teachers or the other adults in the building. And so it's nice to just randomly hear your name from a friend or a colleague that's taken the time to recognize your good efforts. I think also, like Mrs. Miller said, you're not an elementary principal if you're not giving out t-shirts. So we also use our SOAR t-shirts as a way to recognize good behavior. We do a drawing at each month we, they earn a t-shirt, they get a letter home from me, I do a superhero lunch with them where we have a table that we sit at that looks like a tr traditional um, superhero themed birthday party. They have a treat for me, they can invite friends to that, we take pictures, we display it. And again, it's just reinforcing those key characteristics that we want to see in our students and hope that they carry that on with them into adulthood. And every kid loves a little extra random recess. And you know what? Teachers kind of like that, too. So when I feel like, hey, this has been a good week, I'm so proud of my teachers, and I'm proud of my students, I work with my support staff, and we are able to surprise them occasionally with a little recess. That goes a long way, particularly with those kids that every once in a while aren't so sure they want to listen to what Mr. Knott has to say. I will say that number has gotten down each and every grading period. The referrals are less and less, and we do not have repeat offenders. 
And of course, you're not an elementary principal if you don't have a shark fanny pack. So randomly, students would be attacked by the shark throughout the building. I would simply walk into a classroom. I would see something that I liked a student was doing, whether it was an assignment, whether it was helping someone out, whether it was using a strategy to cool themselves down, and they would be rewarded. You never quite knew what the shark had. And if the nurse wasn't around, it might change a little bit about what I might give them. But it's anything from erasers to motivational stickers to the occasional piece of candy. Just again, reinforcing that we appreciate that every day they come in, they work their hardest, and they are kind and helpful to others. If you know anything about Bremen, you know the importance of tradition. And at Bremen Elementary, there's a key person that is important to that building. And luckily, Mr. Burns has been kind enough to come over and join us for two events this school year. The first event was first grade career day, where he came over and showed them what principal life was like when he was a principal. And it was a fun discussion as they noticed the differences between how the things that I do and the things that he does and how technology and things like that has changed over the years. He also blessed us with his presence during our wonderful Veterans Day program and talked about the wall and the history of the wall. Um, he still very much has it. The kids were absolutely engaged um, and teachers were very, very happy to see him as well. Breakfast Club was the perfect opportunity for the new principal to get to know families. So we host that at the beginning of each school year in the mornings, and then we have it again um, toward the spring. And it really is just like a no pre low pressure, come in, hang out with your kid, have some coffee, juice, a donut, chit chat with other parents, get to know some of the um, other kids that your child's um, interacting with, and as a staff for us too, to do just the same thing. Movie nights and dances, hey, who knew? Movies are pretty, pretty cool. You know what I think is funny at Bremen? Those teachers would not let me throw away their VHS tapes, okay? It was a constant like, oh, but we love these videos. So I said, okay, I'm game. We will try one out. Guess what? They aged and the videotape was very shaky. <laughs> so Mr. Knott had to come to the rescue. Um, but other than that, they've gone really well. We've had great attendance at absolutely every single event that we've had um, for our families. Our PTO does a great job at hosting different events like that. Um, and recently we had our health fair. Um, our health clinic staff really brought in people from the community and all kind of walks of life when they talked about safety. And the kids were engaged. They were moving around the building for different sessions throughout the day, good questions. And of course, what makes the principal most proud displaying good character everywhere that they went. Onward and upward, that is the key at Bremen Elementary. So when we think about next school year, we're gonna be building on what we already have in place. So we're gonna to continue to grow and learn in both reading and math and our other content areas. We're gonna bring in enrichment opportunities. We had the Columbus Zoo this year. We'll bring in different ones. It's fun to um, see the excitement in the kids' eyes when, they're, when the animals are that close to them or they get to participate in an activity with that animal. We are going to, as always, um, a pillar of our building is that character traits and making sure we're making good decisions all the time. So we will continue to make social emotional needs a priority in our building. It is a true pleasure and honor to be a part of Bremen Elementary. I thank everyone for helping the new guy really settle in. Um, at this point, I'm proud to say I have all 400 student names down. I've got about mm, three-fourths of the families. I at least recognize your face when you come in. And so my, I promise to be at this point next year 100% on that. Have a good rest of your evening. Good evening. I would like to thank the Board of Education and Mr. Belleville for their continued support. Um, I obviously want to thank our teaching staff at Rushville Middle School. They spend countless hours analyzing data, grading, preparing lessons, uh, but they do so much more and that does not go unnoticed. 
Um, obviously, I would like to thank Mrs. Rice. She's like my right arm and my left arm. Uh, sometimes we come to work and we, we, we walk into the office and we're dressed almost identically. And we're like, sometimes we think we share the same brain, but uh, she's, a, she's a wonderful partner um, at Rushville Middle School. Um, I would also like to thank our food service ladies, our bus drivers, our custodians. Um, Deputy Beddington um, is our school resource officer that we um, got in January, and that extra layer of safety that he provides for our staff and students is so much appreciated. Finally, I would like to thank all of the parents who are part of our parent advisory committee. Um, that was the first year that we've had that this year, and their involvement in energy was contagious, and I look forward to working with them in the future. Over the next few minutes, um, I obviously cannot share with you all of the wonderful things that have happened over the past year at Rushville Middle School, but I hope to just highlight some of the examples um, in our students' successes. Teamwork, empathy, and leadership are just a few of the characteristics that are exercised during our service projects and collaborative activities with the community. As you can see up on the slide, we have various pictures of our students engaging um, with our Leo Club, Student Council, um, just different service projects as far as food donations. Uh, we partnered with our local Girl Scout troop from Bremen and they created this amazing display for student supplies where students could go and get new school supplies if they were running low. Uh, you can see there that students are cleaning up the grounds around um, Rushville Middle School. So they are very active um, in their community engagement. Just this past Saturday, we had members from our National Junior Honor Society, um, as well as student council members who served the meal at our Rushville Alumni Banquet. Um, that's always a great event every spring, and they just did a fabulous job. Um, all of the people, all the alumni who were there commented on the students and how they just did such a great job at that event. And then last month, the Ohio State University Extension Office hosted a financial literacy program called Real Money, Real World. And that was in collaboration with Mr. Burke's seventh grade math classes. Um, in, in celebration of Financial Literacy Week, the Ohio treasurer, Robert Sprague, and his staff visited and recorded some footage in order to create a promotional video for Real Money, Real World. So we had some students spotlighted during that time. We have various pictures here of student involvement at Rushville Middle School. Uh, student involvement is also so very important um, to our, our entire building. We encourage students to get involved with after school clubs, athletics, um, academic showcases, and of course the arts. Back in September, we held a 9-11 showcase for the community where students worked together to research and create projects that represented this historical event. Our band and choir are growing in numbers, and we even had several of our students perform in the spring musical Annie. The musical arts, led by Mr. Kitchen, Mr. Gregory, and Mr. Savage, are thriving. And as Cole had said earlier, um, I just anticipate that program, those programs to continue to grow over time. We hosted our first poetry night earlier this month at Rushville Middle School, and it was well attended with many students who recited their favorite poems or even recited their own personal work. Robotics Club is a favorite for so many of our students who love hands-on technology. As you can see in the picture, students were able to work with tiny little robots called Ozobots, and they can work them through that simulation there in their own student-created city. Um, Bear with me, because I, I have a few people that I want to um, talk about specifically with athletics. Our athletics, um, last year we had 210 student athletes at the middle school. This year we had 264, so our numbers are definitely growing with our student athletes. Our girls track team and our track and field team is just one of our athletic teams that had a great deal of success this last year with the MSL first place finish. Uh, we also had Several of those students compete in our state competition um, that takes place in Hilliard this past spring. 
our student body or our students who competed in that finished 43rd in all divisions of the state. Um, and you think, well, 43rd may not be very good, but if you think of all divisions in the entire state, that's pretty good. Um, and I want to, I just want to speak to a few of the uh, students who placed at the state level. Ava Wilkinson finished 25th for, for pole, vote, pole vault. Avery Martin was 23rd in shot put. Zaley Bojanowski, 16th for high jump. The team of Katie Welsh, Bailey Osborne, Avery Martin, and Kay I'm sorry, Kyla Gasser finished 21st in the state in the 4x100 relay, breaking the RMS record for the fifth time this season. Kyla Gasser finished 20th in the state in both the 100 and 200 meter dashes, breaking the 23 year old RMS record in the 200 meter dash. Katie Welsh finished 11th in the state in the 100 meter hurdles, breaking the RMS record for the second time this season. And Katie also finished fourth in the state in the 200 meter hurdles, breaking the 24 year old RMS record. These results are perfect examples of the commitment, perseverance, and teamwork that our student athletes possess. Um, the WITS program, uh, which takes place, um, you know, in the spring, are, that's the Women in Technology and Science. It's another program that we encourage our students to attend. Um, that takes place at OU Lancaster. And uh, we had several of our sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students who attended that uh, program. And they spent the day learning about veterinary science, aerospace engineering, aviation, microbiology, and architecture, just to name a few. Student excellence, um, our math counts team competed earlier this spring. Um, those students, Luke Sattler, Ellen Morgan, Nick Henwood, and Bryce Lepi, uh, their t our math counts team placed third out of 12 teams. And then Luke Sattler and Kennedy Berenger qualified individually to go on to the state competition where they placed in the top 10 of the students who competed that day. Going on to the next thing, our Power of the Pen students who also um, had an outstanding um, season this spring. We had our students in uh, the regional competition, seventh grade student Addison Kellenbarger earned an eighth place finish. Eighth grade students uh, Morgan Bel Belleville earned fifth place finish. Ellen Morgan earned a second place finish and then Audrey Barr earned a first place finish. And at the state competition that just took place uh, just last week at Ashland University, our team of Audrey Barr, Ellen Morgan, Ava Wilkinson, Morgan Belleville, Paige Gooseman, uh, Kara Bora, and Addison Kellenberger respectively represented Rushville Middle School. And then Ava Wilkinson and Addison Kellenberger both advanced to the final round in that competition and finished within the top 20% riders in the state. And then finally, uh, we had our, uh, we had participated in the National Civics Bee, which was the first time for our students and um, you know other students around the county. Uh, we had uh, three of our middle school students, Mason Springer, Addison Kellenberger, and Lacey Eads, um, all taking center stage as they put their knowledge of civics to the test um, at that event. And then finally, I just want to talk with you about some goals that we have for the 22-23 school year. Um, we have new resources in science and social studies for the upcoming school year for our students in grades five through eight at the middle school. Um, these new resources have an online component, but they also have textbooks and workbooks, which I'm sure the students are very excited to have those in their hands. Um, our goal is to provide the best instruction in science and social studies using these new resources. Preliminary test scores for our Ohio spring tests for the state tests show growth in every level of math and also in eighth grade science as well. So we want to continue to put best practices into our classroom instruction. We've also been working with our instructional coaches uh, to uh, work with reading and language arts and focus on some strategies in word study and fluency that are required elements under this dyslexia law um, as a component of our structured literacy program. Uh, we are also gonna be um, using some benchmark assessments this next year to make sure that we 
are able to analyze the strengths and weaknesses of our kids so that we can make sure that we are closing any gaps in their education and also enriching uh, education as well. And then finally, uh, as um, you know, we have our PBIS as well, which again is just what we use um, to help motivate our students to be the best that they can be. So we'll be working with our PBIS team at the middle school to explore new ideas to keep our students motivated in learning every day. So as I close, I know that academics are so very critical for our students' success. But at Rushville Middle School, we continually want to care for the whole child. As equally as important as academics, we want to reinforce positive character traits so that our students are kind, compassionate, and empathetic. Earlier this month at our National Junior Honor Society induction, I shared with the students that they will either become who they are going to become intentionally or accidentally. So my goal for our students is to intentionally go out and be good to those around them. This along with a strong academic foundation will help them to be the very best versions of themselves. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It is, uh, it's a pleasure to be able to spend a little time here this evening with you. Um, it's humbling to, to sit and listen to the work that, that my colleagues do in, in each of our buildings with our students. Clearly, lots and lots of really good stuff. And um, we take our role seriously as the last stop in that process to get our students ready to go on to what's next post high school. And um, certainly, the most important thing in that process is, is what happens in the classroom. And uh, we have an outstanding group of teachers at Fairfield Union High School that work tirelessly to meet the needs of our students academically and uh, social emotionally. Uh, and, and it's a diverse group that uh, really uh, all of our students, regardless of, of what their priorities and personalities might bring to bear, feel that we've got people that, that they can find and build relationships with here in the building. And I think that's, a, I think that's an important part of of uh, students being uh, supported as they get ready to go to the next level. This is a special time of year in high school, obviously. We have, um, we had last night, we kicked off our graduation week uh, with, our, with our senior awards ceremony. It was very well attended. Felt like that it was a successful evening. Uh, as I mentioned to um, those of you who were at the event last night, you know, it's very, very important to celebrate the successes of our students. They work so hard to do all of the things that they do and accomplish what they accomplish, and uh, we're excited about that. After the event, we went up to the stadium and, and have what had what we call a senior sunset event where the students just came. They brought snacks and lawn chairs and uh, bag toss and various uh, tailgate type games and had some really good fellowship up there till about 9.30 last night. and. Um, and then went home, we came back today, had our graduation practice, I might say probably the best graduation practice we've ever had. Um, so we're really ready to, uh, to enjoy next weekend, uh, Sunday evening, uh, next week at six o'clock in the stadium, uh, the key event of the year, whenever we get to um, recognize our students for graduating and, and kind of um, capture their entire high school career. So, uh, as Mrs. Hahn alluded to, it, it literally would be impossible to, to talk about and list all of the things that, that happen here at Fairfield Union High School that make contrib positive contributions. Whether those positive contributions are to our students, to our community, to our, to our colleagues and the students in our, in our various schools, but just to give you an idea of some of the things that, that uh, we do, and you've heard about some of these, so you know, forgive me for repeating some of them, but... but um, in terms of successes, and these are in no particular order, I just kind of jotted them down this afternoon, but uh, let's start with our CTE programs. These, you know, our, our, our ag program, our business and DECA program, and our family consumer science, FCCLA uh, programs. All of those have competitive components to them. Those students learn clearly the skills necessary to transition into a kind of real-time workforce experiences post high school, but then that the, 
the competition component to that is a little bit different in, in each of those, but we have, we have enjoyed success at both the state and national level in terms of having students qualify for national competitions this year. And really, that is, that is a typical kind of, um, of an event for our CTE programs, the staff and students in those programs. Um, we work with the Red Cross multiple times, multiple, multi, excuse me, multiple times a year uh, to do blood drives that our students participate in uh, very aggressively. Uh, Cole had mentioned the Christmas shopping trip. That's kind of one of our cornerstone events. Uh, it, it really reaches a lot of students, approximately 15 students from both Pleasantville and Bremen. And, um, you know, it's an opportunity for those students maybe to have experiences that they don't get on a regular basis. We're very, very proud of the work that our student council and our National Honor Society do in regards to that. The Second Seven program. Second Seven program, some, some of you may be familiar, is a reading program uh, that um, enables uh, our, our students to push into the elementary schools. Uh, they read to elementary students, and then at the end of that, they have conversations, and then each student in the elementary gets a copy of the book that the students read from. So uh, the concept was established uh, quite a few years ago. Lots and lots of schools and colleges uh, incorporate this, and uh, we've been at this now for a couple of years. Very, very successful, and I think will only continue to grow. We've done extensive work uh, through all of our organizations, both our athletic organizations and our, our clubs to, um, to uh, push into the Bremen community and work with the Bremen Food Pantry. They have a regular uh, distribution of food items to families in need uh, quite often throughout the year. And we're uh, one of the, one of the, uh, the high school is one of the areas that, that really reaches out and works with them. And we're appreciative of that relationship and the, the experiences that our students get to, to have there. Cole had mentioned the music program. This is an area of, um, in our community, we recognize that our music program is a source of great pride and tradition. And um, we are certainly on an uptick in that area. We have young, aggressive directors. Uh, they're working together. They have a, a, a combined joint vision. Uh, they're pushing our students. Our students are responding because students want to be pushed, they want to have success, they want to be challenged, and we're seeing the fruits of that labor early on in the process. So we're really excited about what the future holds in those programs and the successes that we've had already. Um, just as a point of emphasis, uh, uh, some of you may have seen the musical Annie this past year. Uh, it was tremendous, and then uh, at the gala awards ceremony just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had announced that um, Mr. Gregory announced that the musical this coming year will be Mamma Mia, so we'll all be looking to that with great anticipation. Um, our band competed in an adjudication event that they haven't done for a long, long time. This was a sight reading adjudication event, and I don't want to get too technical because I would embarrass myself, but, but uh, basically the, the band students went to a competition. They had no idea what the music was going to be. There, was a, there, was, there is a process that you go through. They get the music. They see it for the first time. I think they get like four minutes to look over it. Then they get four minutes with the director. Then they get four minutes to rehearse. And then they have to perform. So tremendously difficult. It was amazing. I, uh, I, went, into, I went into the classroom and, and uh, watched Mitch, Mr. Kitchen in one of their preps for this event. And they kind of mocked this through. And it was amazing. How, how, how good the quality of the music was without having any opportunity really to get into it and practice it. So, so um, I'm excited about that. We feel like that's gonna be a really um, important part of the overall process of music musicianship uh, for our, our band students. As has been mentioned, uh, the numbers and the quality of the product continue to grow. Athletically, we, um, we again enjoyed another very, very positive athletic year. We had um, what are you, four mid-state league titles, boys and girls cross country, boys basketball and girls track. And then we had uh, five district titles, boys and girls cross country, girls soccer, boys basketball and boys track. And then I might, I might add that um, our boys basketball team then moved on and played in a regional championship the first time in the history of the high school that we've had a basketball team make it to the regional finals. So tremendous work by all of our coaches and all of our athletes throughout this year. We've had food drives and, and clothing drives and 
um, fundraisers for various events. So again, uh, the thing we're most proud of, you know, positive service driven and successful. A few academic trends and initiatives that we're going to look to next year. Our philosophy is this. We want our students to be very prepared for the, their next step, whatever that next step is. So if a student's going to go to, to medical school, we want to give them the foundation that they need to be successful uh, in medical school as they walk out our doors. If a student wants to go weld uh, and go into the job market, we want to give them the skills necessary or put them in connection with the people that can give them the skills necessary to be able to go do that after high school. After all, that's really why we're here to grow and develop people and to give them the resources and the tools necessary to be able to do what they want to do whenever they go uh, to their next phase after high school. We talk about it in their freshman year. We talk to the students about, we talk to, we talk to this group and the incoming freshman group next year, we've already started to have the conversation. This four years, you get every ounce of juice out of it that you can. Think about what you want, you'll probably change your mind and that's okay. You'll probably change your mind many times, and that's okay. But use us to meet your needs, whatever those might be, both academically, as a person, as an athlete, as a musician, again, whatever the case may be. But we have, uh, we have a new workforce development program that we're going to implement this year. Those of you, uh, are pro most everybody in the room is probably aware of the Corridor 33 work group in Fairfield County. Uh, they do have uh, relationships with various uh, trades and unions throughout Fairfield County and Central Ohio. They have six programs that students can, can uh, go into into their senior year, and these students can work to, to, uh, to get into the carpentry union. They become welders, HVAC, uh, electrical, those kinds of things. Areas where students can go make, uh, have a real career and make real money uh, that maybe aren't interested in going on to college. So the workforce development program here at the high school is new for us next year. It is a class. We do have a person that will be overseeing this program and, and working uh, uh, in between with our students and the workforce development center to meet our students' needs in that area. We have updated our business pathway to be more relevant to what's happening um, economically and growth-wise in the Central Ohio area. So our students that come out of our business pathway will have, again, the tools necessary to push into those markets. And then um, uh, two last things. We, we, we put into place um, what we called a math lab two years ago. We've seen that program offer great success to some of our students who who uh, need some extra help in math, we do give a half a credit for it. They take it in semesters. And um, so basically, a student would have a math class to get a, a credit and a half. So they can work on deficiencies that are identified in the classroom, uh, that sometimes it's just a struggle for teachers to have the time to get into a lot of depth whenever things have to be retaught. So this is a support to, to help those students who need that extra time. We're gonna do the same thing with a writing program this year. And uh, we'll see how that goes. We, we study the data closely on all this, and, and uh, we're very optimistic about what these programs may bring to bear over the next few years. And then lastly, and probably most importantly, it's interesting, Mr. Belleville alluded to, to our, our student leadership organization. And we meet with that, or we, we meet with, with those students every four to six weeks or so, and those conversations are real. We want them to be brutally honest with us. We're, we're pretty honest with them. And, um, it was interesting that this year, throughout the course of the year and having conversations with students, um, had some students approach me from maybe, maybe a student group that maybe doesn't always get a lot of voice in a high school. Okay, let's say that. And, and they said, you know, Mr. McPhail, uh, we know that everybody here cares about us and, and you know, we know that, you, you know, trying to support us, but we would like to have some kind of a, a group that we could go to and sit down and talk about, you know, if, if a student feels bullied or, or maybe set aside or pushed aside. So I listened, I, you know, we had a conversation. This would, this would be a conversation in the cafeteria or something, you know, kind of a casual conversation. And you make note of those kinds of things as a principal. And then fast forward a month or two, we're sitting in a student advisory meeting, and sure enough, this same concept came back up again. Well, I mean, 
you know, I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but I'm smart enough to figure out that, you know, we've got, we've got voice coming from multiple areas in our high school where we have a need. And uh, I think we all, we, we see it on the news every day. Young people, adults alike, are really struggling with their, with their mental health for various reasons. And um, in every single school, uh, adv advo advocacy for students who are less represented is critically important. It's really, it, you really can't have a thriving school if you don't have some kind of supports for those students. And we've worked hard on that, and we certainly have those supports in place, but clearly this was something we needed to do. So we're in the midst of, of putting this together. We're really excited about the opportunity to possibly give students who choose, totally voluntary, a place to go, uh, to be able to sit down and have a conversation with the supervision of, of trained professionals uh, to kind of lead those discussions and, and steer those discussions while at the same time giving them an opportunity to recognize the fact that, you know, certainly they're not in this alone, which sometimes I think can, can be the case whenever you're, you're struggling with your mental health. So uh, we're excited about that program. I think it will, it will serve, serve our students well. And I put the term student ownership there because um, student ownership is the glue that makes anything work. You know, if the students don't take a hold of it, if they're not going to own it, uh, you know, adults can't drive successful initiatives in a high school or really anywhere. So um, that's going to be critical. So you've heard a little bit about AAA plus one from Cole. And our AAA plus one, attitude attendance attempts plus one. Just very quickly, that's, very, that's you know, there are so many different ways that you could put together a slogan or a, or a thought process to kind of capsulize motivation, to capsulize what successful people do. Because for me, I know that our students are going to be well educated. I know what our teachers do in the classrooms. I know they're pushed academically. I know they're getting uh, the foundational skills academically they need. But yet, not every single one is as successful as we'd like to see them be. Why? And we all recognize, you know, that's, there are intangibles there. So how do you move the needle on the intangibles? And, you know, that's a passion of mine. So attitude attendance attempts plus one, just attitude clearly. When you come into a situation and you feel like you're going to do the best job you can do and you believe in doing the best you can do, it gives you a chance to, to succeed. Attendance, obviously, being where you're supposed to be, every day on a regular basis con consistently. But the hidden part of attendance is that's not just physical. That's also emotional. You can be in a seat in a classroom and not be, at, and be thinking about something not in the classroom. Or you could be at your work spot and be thinking about something not at your work spot. So clearly, attendance physically and emotionally that you are completely immersed in the work, the task at hand, where you are when you're there. Attendance. And then attempts. Maybe the most important of the three in my mind, and that's simply the willingness to try things and not be afraid to fail, because we all recognize that nobody is successful 100% of the time. You know, how you learn to handle adversity and how you learn to, to grow from adversity goes a long way to what you're going to accomplish with all the academic skills that you learn in, in high school and college. The plus one, every day's a new day. Try to do a little bit better today than you did yesterday. And as Cole said, and I appreciate Cole, um, over the course of 365 days in a year, that's going to matter. So our next step with this is to, uh, we're going to add a little to it. Uh, both with our teaching staff and our students. This doesn't just apply to students. This applies to administrators, students, custodians, every single person that walks into this building, it applies. So we're gonna, we're gonna put some, some uh, numbers to all this. We're gonna reward people that try, bottom line. We're not going to reward necessarily the success, some of that, but people that try. So we'll have a system in place to recognize and reward our staff and we're going to set those goals for them, and that ties into what you're seeing on the board there. 
And then lastly, we're going to do the same thing with our students. And I'll just kind of close with this. And, and we'll get more input on this as we get into it next year. But so often in a high school, the old model is just automatically seniors get first everything, right? They get the first parking spots. They get first in line at the lunch. They get for whatever, just because you're a senior. And some of that, some of that we feel is valid. However, we are going to start to try to change the paradigm a little bit to um, put, get students that, that show up here, do AAA plus one, work, their, work really hard. We want to recognize them for that. We want, we want to give a nod in some cases to those things. So we are going to build criteria, gold, silver, and bronze, and it'll be based on those very things. You know, we'll, we're going to put statistics to those, and you know, the, the, the better students do, they're going to be in a gold, silver, or bronze criteria, and there will be perks associated with that. Now, those are pretty tough. The, the, the numbers to those are going to be tough to achieve, so those are going to be kind of elite groups. So what happens to all the rest of the students that aren't in one? So that's the second part. You hear the term PBIS. Each of our principals has talked about that. So we'll have a whole nother layer to support our students who aren't quite there yet to help them start to inch their way, get a little closer, and ultimately our goal is to get students to move up levels. That's the ultimate goal. So that's something we're going to be working with heading into this year. So, you know, this year was kind of an introduction. We talked about AAA plus one. At the end of every morning announcement, you know, I end that with, you know, plus one. But this is going to take it uh, one level up. So uh, we're excited about what the future holds. It's humbling to be, able to, um, to be able to represent Fairfield Union local schools and Fairfield Union High School. I take a lot of pride in it. Um, I really appreciate everything that, that our students bring to bear. This is a tremendous graduating class. They are, they are truly special, and um, I appreciate the opportunity. So thank you. Have a nice evening. It's easy to see why uh, I get excited every day I come to work and all the great things happening. Uh, across the district, every building, and then, uh, you know, on a, on a larger scale, also things we're looking to do as a district to keep moving forward and provide opportunities for our students. Um, I want to start with uh, just a thank you uh, to our students, uh, our staff members, uh, every single staff member that works for this district uh, takes great pride in what they do. Uh, they take, uh, it's an honor to serve this community uh, so thank you to them. Um, and far too many times we, we go through these type of things and you try to list certain people and you forget somebody. So tonight I really wanted to focus on just thanking six particular people, uh, and it's our Board of Education members. Uh, we started the year, and I say six, you normally have five on the Board of Education, but we did have uh, one board member serve most of the year and then have to step away. So I uh, want to thank uh, Mr. Smelter, our board president, Ms. Conrad Zangmeister, our vice president, Ms. Johns, uh, Mr. Hoffman, Mr. Myers, and I want to include uh, Mr. Horn, Steve Horn, who uh, also served on, on the board this past year. And, and for all of their hard work and dedication, and it's uh, oftentimes a, a thankless job. Uh, it requires a lot of time, effort, and energy away from families and uh, they do it for the love of the community and love of the district, so we're appreciative of that. You've heard a common theme throughout the evening uh, of our focus on uh, teaching our kids to compete, try to do things better, be the best that you can be day in and day out. And along those lines, we approached our Student Advisory Council and our district leadership team talking about the vision and mission of this district and how we can try to improve and, and really set the course for what we want to accomplish with our students. And so we undertook uh, rewriting our vision and mission statements this year. Uh, I'm finishing up my seventh year and in my seven years here, we hadn't visited these, these statements and sometimes they just kind of get lost and become words on paper and, and lose their true value and meaning. So we wanted to revisit this and through heavy input from our student body, uh, our parent teacher organizations, our staff members, our district leadership team, we were able to rewrite our mission and vision statements, and we want to share that. 
So Fairfield Union will foster excellence by creating a safe, empathetic environment where everyone is able to thrive as learners and citizens. And two key words there for myself, and, and these things mean something different for everybody, but first was you know, empathetic. Whenever you're going about life, it's always uh, a good practice to put yourself in somebody else's shoes, try to experience what they're, they're experiencing in their lives, and that helps you gain new perspective on situations. And then the second part of that is just everyone. Not just our students, but our staff members, our families, our community, each and every day. There's something to learn, there's something to be better at, there's something that you can do more of. And so we really want to stress that with our students that, it, that it's every single day. And then the, the vision statement, you know, how, we, how are we getting there? What, what is it? that we're trying to strive towards, and we really wanted to simplify this so it became something that students could easily remember, staff members could recite, and it kind of becomes a motto. And for us, it was uh, pretty simple. Every day, in every way, excellence is a way of life. And it's real simple. It's not something you can turn on and off. Show up every day and simply do your best. And that doesn't always have to be the best that you can absolutely be because some days are better than others. It's just the way it goes. But every single day you can show up and try your best. And so that's a driving force that we're trying to you know, weave throughout everything that we do here. I, you know, I tell students, I don't care if you're going to the cafeteria to go to lunch, be the first in line. Compete. Be the best that you can be. So we, we brought that this year. Uh, and really want to thank our students and kind of one of the driving forces of this and I don't know how true this story is but I've always found it interesting uh, the last couple years you, you hear Ohio State stress the Ohio State University and it, it's kind of become uh, ridicule for other schools that make fun of Ohio State but I didn't realize until about a year and a half ago there's a reason that they stress the Ohio State University the stands for something. Tradition, honor, excellence. The Ohio State University. And I, I like to think, uh, M Mike Myers used to talk about all the time, the Pleasantville Elementary School. And I kind of started doing it and once I found this out, the Fairfield Union Local School District, where tradition matters, honor, excellence. Those are the things we live, we preach every single day. And it's really kind of the fabric of this community. And, so we've tried to reflect that in our vision and mission statements. And in all of our slides, you see this symbol in the bottom corner. And again, trying to reiterate some of the things you've, you've heard this evening, community, courage to try new things, a caring environment, and then a place where career and college are on the same playing field. One is not more important than the other. We don't care what our students are gonna do when they leave us. We just want them to do it to the best of their ability every single day. It's what makes our community special, and it's what makes our, our kids different whenever they leave here from uh, students around them in other communities is that, that belief that showing up every day and giving your best. And that, so that's uh, something that we we're extremely proud of and will continue to push with our students moving forward. Extremely proud to announce that uh, we'll be making several safety upgrades throughout the district. Uh, we, again, one of those things, we work extremely hard to provide a safe environment for our staff and students every single day. Uh, this year, we, uh, not just this year, we've been trying for the school safety grant for several years now, and this year we were finally awarded the school safety grant in the amount of $400,000. Uh, our first step, uh, many of the cameras across the entire district, uh, all the buildings, uh, we've tried to replace cameras over the years, but some of our cameras are literally 13 years old. They, they were installed with the buildings. The quality of the video isn't great. Uh, at times they skip and miss things. Uh, so we, we believe that that became a, a real security issue. Uh, so this summer we will be replacing all interior and exterior cameras across the district. It's a, a little over a $200,000 project, 
and will all come from our school safety grant. So uh, we're replacing all interior exterior cameras. We've replaced all cameras on our buses with a, a higher grade camera that also has sound. And we are working this summer, we'll be working to replace all door locking uh, devices across the district. Again, when the buildings were built, uh, Detective Maple was instrumental in uh, developing a door locking mechanism. So we've always had things, but over the years, those devices uh, are starting to malfunction and they're a little bit older and, and difficult to work at times. So we're looking to simplify the process on how we can secure our classroom doors. And so we're, all of these things will be coming from uh, the school safety grant. Also this year, we, we had the addition of school security officers in every building and as a, as a parent, the peace of mind that that brings is uh, incredible. Uh, it, it's been, what we thought was gonna be a good program has been a, a great achievement for our district. We were the first uh, district in Fairfield County to adopt this model where we're hiring retired sheriff deputies who are still active members of SWAT team in Fairfield County and they're in our buildings from the time they open till the time they close. And uh, having them there has been great for our students uh, and our staff, but the relationships our kids are building with our officers is incredible to watch as well. Uh, so we're extremely excited about that. Uh, we also have on all of our classrooms, these are a couple years old, but uh, a lot of people don't realize we have a, a product called Window Armor. We're the only school in Fairfield County to have this device. Uh, Sheriff Lape was able to see it this year and uh, walked away impressed with what we have. Uh, and the window armor on classroom doors, you have windows on all the classroom doors and we've always viewed that as a weakness uh, that the window could be knocked out, someone could reach through to open the door and gain access. Uh, so the window armor is literally a sheet of metal that slides across that window in a lockdown situation. Uh, not bulletproof, but it is bullet resistant. And what we have found uh, through lots of research in uh, violent situations in schools, uh, school shooters do not try to get into rooms. They search for unlocked rooms, they search for easy access. So the more precautions you can put in place, the more safe and secure your facilities are. So we're, we're proud to have a product like that on all of our classroom doors. Um, and then also on all exterior doors and windows on the first floor of all of our buildings, we have bullet resistant film. Again, this was installed several years ago, but just layer after layer of safety devices and, and we continue to chase that every year and try to improve upon what we have and we do that in close consultation with the sheriff's department. Uh, we're in the fifth year of our energy conservation project, uh, something we started. Uh, in hopes of reducing our carbon footprint, reducing electric bills for the district, uh, and, and just being uh, good partners with the environment. Uh, we, this project was something we would hope that over a span of 10 years would pay for itself. In year five, you see our number is a little lower, but we haven't received our fourth quarter numbers yet. Uh, we do expect that to be up around $200,000 in savings. Uh, so roughly five years, we'll be close to $1.2 million in savings off our electric bill. And the way that's been calculated in year one, we looked at our electric bill, and then each year we compare each year to that original bill. So even though prices have gone up, we have still managed to save this amount of money over the course of five years. So in five years, the project has officially paid for itself. So that's extremely exciting to see. And uh, we know there's still more work to be done, but, but we are proud of the work that, that we have accomplished in that area. Uh, also part of our uh, permanent improvement funds, uh, we replaced all of the house lights in the auditorium this year. Uh, we took uh, the bulbs and transferred them over to LED, which was no small feat, a uh, very challenging project. But again, uh, through the generosity of our community to provide our permanent improvement levy, uh, we were able to improve lighting in this facility and uh, obviously that's used uh, quite a bit and, and just a tremendous facility we have. Uh, we take great pride in trying to provide a first class learning environment for our students. Uh, this evening I, I will be asking our Board of Education to approve uh, projects to address the following items. Um, 
first replacement of all building controls for heating and air. As well as we've done over the last five years in our energy conservation, we are seeing our controls start to falter. Again, the controls are original to the buildings, 13 years old. They all operate uh, using the internet. And as you might imagine, over 13 years, technology has advanced quite a bit. So our controls are just aging and need to be replaced. It will help all of our systems operate more efficiently. We're also looking to replace the chillers at each building. Uh, chillers are an, an incredibly expensive item. Uh, right now, lead time for chillers, if you order one now, you're looking anywhere 40 to 50 weeks before they come in. So it's one of those situations where we're noticing a lot of uh, small repairs to moderate repairs needing to be made on our chillers. And so we're in a position with our uh, permanent improvement levy that we feel like it now's the time to replace before we have a total failure and then we're stuck in August with 90 degree heat and no air conditioning. So we're, we're in the process of looking to replace chillers at every building. Uh, we will be installing train chillers, which I, if, I guess if it's good enough for Intel, it'll be good enough for here. So uh, we're, we're happy to be bringing that to the board and then a complete replacement of the roof at Bremen Elementary School. Uh, unfortunately, over the years, we've, we've noticed more and more leaks happening there and starting to see a failure of some of the materials on the roof, so we're looking at a total replacement there. For the 23-24 school year, uh, again, uh, very proud to serve our Board of Education. They understand that in our community, uh, things are tight. Uh, a lot of problems with the economy still in our country. So for the second consecutive year, we will be suspending all student fees uh, for the coming school year. So we're uh, happy about that and excited to announce that. Also, uh, thanks to the generosity of our county commissioners, uh, the Workforce Development Center and Hocking College, uh, Fairfield Union will be bringing driver's ed back uh, for our students. Uh, the county commissioners are paying for a vehicle that the district will own. So they're, they're gonna purchase that and donate it to the district. Uh, Hocking College will operate the driver instructor program and then the Workforce Development Center is helping us coordinate this. Uh, starting next year will be Lancaster City Schools and Fairfield Union as the two schools incorporating driver's, ever, driver's education Fairfield County. For some of our students, the program will be free. Uh, other students, we're looking at keeping the cost as low as possible and students will be able to do their driving here at school. Uh, so we're, we're excited to bring that back. And again, this is one of those things that a lot of our students want to go straight to the workforce, but the struggle is getting to the job site. Uh, so we want to knock down hurdles that are, that are preventing students from being successful once they le leave here. Also, we're extremely proud to report that Fairfield Union High School and Rushville Middle School received the Purple Star designation this year. I want to thank Mr. Destadio our guidance counselors at the high school, middle school, the principals at the high school, middle school, for all of the hard work that went into uh, securing uh, this great honor. We're already laying the foundation and we, we expect Bremen Elementary School and Pleasantville Elementary School to receive those designations ne next year. And the Purple Star Award is simply uh, for the amount of support uh, that our school district gives to veterans and we're, we're proud to do that. We're proud of our students going straight to the military out of high school and, and the service men and women in our community both currently serving and have served. So we're, we're uh, extremely proud of this designation. And finally, uh, as far as updates, uh, we will be presenting our five-year forecast at the board meeting at 7.30 in the cafeteria. We would invite you to stick around for that uh, and, and uh, see what what the next five years hold for our financial outlook. Uh, I am proud to announce the state of the district is strong, uh, both financially, academically, and then all those other pieces that go into educating the whole child. Uh, extremely proud of the work being done here day in and day out. So uh, we do invite you to stick around for the board meeting immediately after uh, the state of schools. Now we, we get to the best part of the evening. Uh, after a long wait, students, thank you for being patient. Um, we are to the point of the evening where we want to honor our senior salute. 
uh, honorees, I ask Mr. Destadio to join me on stage. Uh, first, just kind of fill you in about the senior salute. Uh, we are in our fifth, fourth year of, not fifth year now, um, yeah, fourth year of senior salute. FFA, so on and so forth. It, it is really looking at the complete picture of being a student at Fairfield Union and everything we want and expect out of our kids. And so we created a selection process, a, a, a scoring rubric that just looks at all of your activities. Uh, the students fill out the application. They, there's an essay they have to write as well, what it means, what it means to them to be a graduate of Fairfield Union. And then the students are randomly assigned a number. Uh, the district office staff, minus me, gets the, all the applications with just a number on it. They score, the, they score each application on our rubric, add up the point totals, and then the top 10 point totals are given to me. I match the number back up with the kid, and, and those are our 10 students. Uh, we, Mr. Miller and myself, Mr. Miller, uh, before he passed away and before he came to Fairfield Union was an auditor with the state of Ohio, so making sure things were done correctly was always very important to him and uh, make sure things were anonymous. So uh, I can truly say that this process is 100% earned by these students and it's the actions that they've taken, the, the programs that they've been a part of over the four years that they've been in high school. So what we'll do this evening, we'll, we'll call them up. Uh, I'll read a short biography. Uh, I asked all the students to give me just a few things. Uh, if, if they gave me their entire biography, I, we'd be here till tomorrow. I, it's impressive what these 10 kids have been able to accomplish in four years. So we'll read a short biography. Uh, Mr. Destadio has a, a medallion to give them that they'll wear at graduation. Uh, so with this being uh, you know, a, a fairly uh, small group, uh, you're joining a very elite uh, and uh, special group of people. Uh, each year we honor 10 students, and uh, so we're, you know, it, it's, it's not something that is uh, uh, widely handed out. It, it is most definitely earned. So with no further ado, we'll call our first honoree. Uh, we normally go in alphabetical order, and, uh, and so like to switch it up a little bit, and we're going to go in reverse order. So our first honoree, Liza Clark Vail. <laughs> Liza is the daughter of Patrick and Holly Vail. She will be recognized as a valedictorian at graduation. She's A honor roll four years, four-year scholar athlete, four-year Mid-State League Academic Honors, the Falcon Way Award, she's a member of the Student Council, a member of the National Honor Society where she has served as an officer for two years, a four-year letterman on the swim team, four-time district qualifier, voted captain her senior year. Liza will be attending Paul Smith's College, majoring in baking and pastry arts. Liza Clark Vale. Our next honoree, Nella Mlynn Stansberry. <laughs> Nella is the daughter of Greta Saunders. She will be recognized as the Val Victorian at graduation. A honor roll four years, a credit, college credit plus participant, member of the National Honor Society, 
the Key Club. She's a varsity soccer player for four years, where she earned first team Mid-State League honors and was voted captain her senior year. She will be receiving a Diploma of Distinction. Nella plans to attend Shawnee State University, where she will earn an associate's degree in dental hygiene and her bachelor's in health sciences. Nella Malin Stansberry. Our next honoree, Genevieve Ryan Squires. Genevieve is the daughter of Jill and Jason Squires. She will be recognized as a valedictorian. She has earned a letter in academic excellence. She received the Ohio Excellence Scholarship. She earned citizenship and fine and performing arts seals for her diploma. Earned her marching band letter. Received the Most Falcon Spirit Award in band. Received a superior rating on violin and clarinet at the OMEA solo and ensemble competition. She was awarded the Outstanding Alto Award for Assembly Singers, the Louis Armstrong Jazz Award, and she was recipient of the Robert Trochia and FUMAA scholarships. She was also voted the Outstanding Music Student. Genevieve will be attending Ohio University where she hopes to be a member of the Marching 110 and major in music therapy. Genevieve Ryan Squires. Our next honoree is Anna Joyce Pike. Anna is the daughter of Andrew and Jennifer Pike. She'll be recognized as valedictorian. She's all A honor roll for four years, three years college credit plus. She received the AP Scholar Award She's been a student ambassador for two years, a member of the National Honor Society two years, and Key Club for four years. She's a member of the Spanish Club for four years where she ser served as secretary, member of the swim team two years, track team four years, soccer team four years where she earned honorable mention all district, and she has been a 4-H member for four years. Anna plans to attend the Ohio State University majoring in English Editing and Digital Publishing, Anna Joyce Pike. Our next honoree is Carly Michelle Miller. Carly is the daughter of John and Mindy Miller. She'll be recognized as valedictorian on Sunday. She has earned her academic varsity letter. She was all A honor roll four years, member of the National Honor Society. She is active in FFA where she earned her state degree. She is a member of the Junior Fair Board, member of the volleyball team, four, active in 4-H in church and she was selected the Government Student of the Year. Carly will be attending The Ohio State University, majoring in Agriculture Business and Economics. Carly Michelle Miller. Our next honoree, Catherine Elizabeth Markwood. Katie is the daughter of Travis and Jody Markwood. She'll be graduating magna cum laude. She's a member of the National Honor Society for two years. She has been a class officer for four years where she served as secretary. She's an active member of the FFA where she has earned her chapter degree, state degree, and she was president of the FFA her senior year. She's an all-A honor roll, has been a member or active participant in College Credit Plus. She is a member of the Superintendent Student Advisory Council. She served as president of the Country Kids 4-H. She's been a member of the Assembly Singers four years, 
has taken part in the musicals all four years and was 2022 Fairfield County Junior Fair Queen first attendant. Katie will be attending Bowling Green State University, majoring in early childhood education. Catherine Elizabeth Marquette. Our next honoree, Jaina Morgan Markwood. <laughs> Jaina is the daughter of John and Jennifer Markwood. She'll be honored as valedictorian on Sunday. She's all a honor roll for four years, a member of the National Honor Society. She has served as class vice president for four years. She's an active participant in College Credit Plus, a four-year member of Student Council. She is a member of the Student Student, the Superintendent Student Advisory Council, track team member for four years where she's a four-year letterman, active with the Country Kids 4-H Club where she has served as treasurer for two years, a member of the Key Club, and a member of the FFA. Jaina will attend Ohio University where she will major in communication sciences and disorders with hopes of becoming a speech language pathologist. Jaina Morgan Markwood. Our next honoree is Colin Brian Mahler. Colin is the son of Brian and Bridget Muller. He'll be recognized as a valed valedictorian on Sunday. All A honor roll for four years. He has earned his academic letter. He's a member of the National Honor Society, active participant in College Credit Plus, a member of the marching band where he was squad and section leader. He has served as class treasurer, a member of the Superintendent Student Advisory Council, also active with the pep band, symphonic band, and he was the stage manager for the musicals. Colin will be attending the University of Central Florida where he will major in aerospace engineering. Colin Brian Muller. Our next honoree is Cole Fred Johnson. Cole is the son of Matthew and Mary Johnson. He will be honored as a valedictorian on Sunday. He has served as class president for four years. He's been on the superintendent's student advisory council longer than me, four years. Cole, you should just run the place. He has served as National Honor Society president. He has earned his academic letter. He has earned the chancellor scholarship. He has been a member of the soccer team basketball team where they won district and were regional finalists this year. He's been awarded scholar athlete and he was mid-state league academic all league. Cole will be attending Southeastern University where he will major in biblical studies with a minor in worship. Cole Fred Johnson. Our next honoree, Annie Jo Deo. Annie is the daughter of Mark and Heidi Deo. She will be honored as valedictorian on Sunday. She is all A honor roll for four years. She has earned her academic varsity letter. She is a very active member of the FFA where she has earned her state degree and she finished first place in the state in forage production proficiency. She is a member of the Junior Fair Board. She is a member of the Fairfield County Youth Advisory Committee. She's been a member of the National Honor Society and has served on student council. Annie will attend The Ohio State University, major, majoring in agriculture education. Annie Jo Deo.
ladies and gentlemen, and bring back the 10 Senior Salute honorees for the class of 2023. While I have them all up here, um, when Mr. Miller passed away um, in 2019, um, through the generosity of Kevin's family and members of our community, a scholarship was set up in, in Kevin's honor. And uh, each year the Miller family uh, oversees that scholarship and they distribute $2,000 in scholarships uh, the, the only real um, caveat to this is uh, Mr. Miller's family wanted uh, the scholarship recipient to be one of the 10 senior salute honorees. Uh, he helped establish this program and, and they felt that that was uh, the most appropriate thing. And the selections are made via the uh, essays that the students write. As part of the application process, the students write an essay about what Fairfield Union means to them and those essays are read, shared with the Miller family, and, and they ultimately uh, just which essay speaks to them. And, and, and that's how, that's how the, honor, the honoree is selected. It is my great honor uh, to award the Kevin Miller Memorial Scholarship every year. Uh, this year the family did decide to pick two recipients, so each person will receive $1,000 each. Our, uh, First recipient, and I, I owe Annie a huge apology. Every year, Annie, I do it to somebody. I forget to flip the slide. I apologize. We'll get a picture when we're done in front of your slide, okay? Um, the uh, first recipient of the Kevin Miller Scholarship this year is Liza Vail. Our second recipient of the Kevin Miller Memorial Scholarship, Cole Johnson. One more time. Great job, guys. You may be seated. Uh, parents, when we're finished here, we will keep things up. Uh, I, I owe Annie a, a picture, and um, we do have a backdrop set up just out in the hallway if you want to get pictures with students there as well. Uh, but at this time, I would like to call Jeff Smelter, our board president, to the podium uh, for some closing remarks. Thank you, Mr. Bevel. Uh, just a few thanks. Uh, I'd like to thank my fellow board members. Uh, I'd like to thank the staff and uh, administration at all of our schools in the district for a great year, as you've seen in these slides tonight. And uh, I'd like to thank you parents for raising these salute winners and sharing them with us. Uh, and most of all, I'd like to thank the award winners. You guys have uh, had great four years at Fairfield Union, 12 years if you've been here all the way through, and uh, we thank you very much. Let's give them one more round of applause. <laughs> one last thing, as uh, Mr. Belleville already said, we'd like to invite you to the uh, board meeting, which will be happening next, so uh, that's it. Thank you for coming. Board meeting will start at 7.30 in the cafeteria. Thank you. <laughs>